Thanks, secret outpost for the razor leaf. Nice. That's not very good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting bored of this already. You're here because you've acquired the razor leaf, but you've found it's small, underpowered, and almost useless. There's just something missing, and you don't know what. Hello? In this video, I'll guide you through transforming your pouring razor leaf into two ultimate variations. A high speed, firepower packed B-Class Beast and a colossal C-Class Titan optimized for cargo and defense. We'll look at a whole range of tips and tricks and how to go from this to this. Now let's put the old Mantis to rest and build a new legacy amongst the stars. Now whether you're mid-game, still unravelling the secrets of the Starfield universe, or end-game, about to start a new journey, I've got two different ships for both occasions. With precision, I've brought together top-tier components, shaping a starship that commands attention as one of the most striking vessels among the stars. This tutorial is your gateway to uncovering the secrets behind this masterpiece. I'll not only guide you through the customization process to align it with your needs, but also provide tips to unleash its full potential. For your convenience, I've added timestamps to effortlessly navigate this tutorial, and I'm gonna try a faster approach to the build guide, so let me know in the comments how smoothly you followed along. Now to max out this build, we're integrating the cutting edge 10.4 DS reactor. Providing a staggering 39 pips of power, it rivals even the top C-class reactors while being half the size, resulting in a lighter, more agile ship. Now I'll go over this reactor in more detail later in the build. This reactor empowers us to push shields and engines to their max, with ample power remaining for two fully charged weapons. And running them without a third weapon system means you can focus on the battle at hand without constant power pip adjustments. Utilizing four PB-175s and two CE-29 missile launchers allows for continuous fire without the need to recharge. And as they damage shield and hull, you can offer a relentless offense, throwing everything you have at them without the need to move power between weapon systems. Paired with the dynamic SA-4330 engines, this ship exudes authority, reaching high speeds and striking fear into every pirate. Thanks to the Razor Leaf special ability, some pirates flee at the mere sight of you. And with the RD-3000 grav drive and two 500 ton helium-3 tanks, you can hunt them down in every corner of the universe. More than just a lean, mean fighting machine, this ship is a fashion statement, and you can elevate its capabilities further by enhancing your skills, upgrading shields, engines, aerodynamics, particle beams, and ballistics will give your ship superpowers, effectively unlocking god mode. On top of that, you can go into your science skills and rank up your Anutronic Fusion. Ranking this up to four will give you five extra power pips. Experience a max shield strength of 1450 with a Vanguard Bulwark shield, significantly boosted engine speed, and increased damage output. You'll be unstoppable piloting this ship. Now let's construct this B-Class fighter, and later, I'll guide you through converting it into a C-Class build with all the bells and whistles. To start, you'll need to find a cozy planet, build an outpost, and construct a landing bay with a builder. Here you can assemble most of your new ship, and then we can head over to the Red Mile for the specialist parts. A lot of you seem to want the build list, so pause now if you do. If you aren't ranked enough for certain parts, then you can swap them out for stuff you have unlocked, and change them out as you progress through the game. You can use a lower level reactor, delete the missile launchers, and still have a super powerful ship to kickstart your game. So we're going to be starting with the Deimos 120 LD landing bay, then we put a Deimos belly onto the back, a Deimos armory above that, and then we stick a Hope Technos B on the back, then we can just put a Deimos companionway in front, and I like to put a porthole just on the front there. Then we can add the Nova weapon mount onto a Deimos living quarters, followed by a bracer and a Hope Tech end pipes, a Teo cowling above that, and then a Stroud control station. Now we're going to do a quick drop down glitch, so we need to get a companionway just above that. Then we can get our Viking CP220 cockpit, stick that onto the hat. Now once we get rid of the companionway, we can select this cockpit again, it'll drop straight down. Now we want these two Stroud Capes on the back. Then we can add four SA4330 engines and put two Stroud Capes on the bottom. Then we have three Aculander 11s. 
and a Stroud Capet on the end on both sides. Then we want a Galleon S204 on one side, followed by two braces, a Teo Spine and a Nova Cowling on the end. They need to be level 60 for the 104 DS reactor, have a pilot in rank 3 and Starship design rank 4. But this is a brilliant reactor and it just goes behind the first engine. If you don't have this reactor, don't worry, just use what you got. Then we need two braces in front of that. The grav drive goes the other side. Now this one is level 33 requirement. Starship design rank 2. Then we're going to add three Nova braces in an L on the end of the ship like this. Attach two Deimos wings to the sides. Then once we get rid of the top brace so we can drop the wings down. Now we need to stack two braces either side. They're going to go on the side of the braces before the spine. Then we can grab our radiators and stick them on the side to there. And I'm going to pop these braces back to avoid confusion. Now we're just going to pop a bracer on top of that and pop a bracer in front of that on top of the radiator on both sides. Then we're just going to move the braces back behind. And these braces will just drop straight down into place. Now we're just going to add two portholes to the sides of these front forks. That just locks the wings into place. Then we can take our cargo, shielded or not, up to you, put it here. Then we're going to put two Deimos wings either side of the cockpit, a bracer on top of the hab. Then we can add these Nova cowlings to the side of the bracer. And with the bracer deleted, we can drop these cowlings down into place. Now once again, we're going to put a Nova bracer on top and put two Stroud capes either side. Delete the bracer and drop those caps down into place. Now we want a 500T helium free tank, followed by a Hope Tech radiator and a Nova cowling, both sides. Now we need to attach a bracer above the radiators and a Deimos wing on the side. Move the bracer out of the way and the wing will drop down. We can just repeat the same for the other side. Okay, now we're going to construct the little side wings, so we need two Stroud Capets on the bottom, an SA4330 engine in the middle, and a cowling in the front. Then we can just sandwich it together with another set of Stroud Capets. Now I like to add this Nova radiator to the side here. Then we can just highlight the whole thing and move it over to the ship. Now we can do the exact same for the other side. And I like to add this Deimos 100 DP Slim Docker to the top along with the Vanguard Bulwark Shield Generator. Now you can pick this generator up through the Vanguard missions and I highly recommend you do. You get a max shield strength of 1450 when you unlock the shield skills and it will save your ass. As I said earlier, I like to run 4 PB175 Helion Beams as they have a high damage and damage both shield and hull. This means you don't really need to run a second or third weapon system and you can save power, meaning you're not moving power pips around during an epic fight. With the 39 pips of power our reactor gives us, we've got some extra room for two missile launchers, just to give it that extra kick. But this really is all you need for a mid-game fighter. Now we can also add a scan jammer if you added the shielded cargo earlier, just to boost your chances of smuggling successfully. As a bonus, if you want to board ships like C-Class Giants, just so you can add them to your hangar, we can add the Firebolt 4000 suppressor. Now that concludes the B-Class build, but I highly suggest you stick around for the C-Class because we still have some tips and tricks that you may find useful. Now here's a quick parts list adapted to the C-Class upgrade. Pause now and take a photo if you need this. Now to fully max out this ship, we need the SAL 6830 engines from Stroud Eklund. To unlock these engines, you need to complete the mission, all that money can buy, diplomatically. I won't spoil it for you, but this means no guns. Now we're going to head to Stroud Eklund first in the Narion system and attach six of these engines. Now we've done that, we can head over to Deimos in Seoul and add four 320 CB landing gear to these gaps next to the wings. Then we can head back to our outpost and assemble it as follows. Now to upgrade this ship to a C-Class, we're going to start off with this Deimos landing bay. We just need to move that forward one space and then we can put these two Deimos 320CB landing gears behind it. Then on top of that we've got this Deimos living quarters, a companionway in front and a Deimos belly on the rear. Above that everything else is exactly the same. 
Now we can replace these engines with the SAL 6830s, one either side. Then we have two Galleon S204 cargo holds on both sides. Then in front of that, we have this J52 Gamma Grav Drive. On the other side, everything's exactly the same. We're just using the SF40 Sheared Flow Reactor. Now, if you do want a few more habs, then you can arrange the Galleon cargo holds like this. Put the hab on the bottom. Then once we add all these parts back to the side of the ship, we can delete these two braces here and add another hab in there. We can also do the same for the other side if we need to. That way we can have a workshop, science lab, passenger slots, everything you need. We have a Deimos Skeg A, a Deimos landing gear, two braces and a cowling, Hope Tech end pipes on the top, and then we can add our two engines to the back here. So all we're doing really is taking away the radiator, putting in a bracer and adding end pipes to the top. Then we're going to put our 500T helium free tanks in the slots where our old engines were. Now having a C-Class reactor and these massive SAL engines means you can increase the cargo and habs, but we are inevitably going to be a lot slower. This isn't a problem for this tank though, as we have a huge amount of hull and swapping out the bulwark shield for the SG1800 increases our max shield strength to 1600 and we have the reactor pips and the weapons to blow through anything. Now really you can't go wrong with this setup, we have two Devastator 1500 missile launchers, four PB-175s and six Vanguard obliterators. Now all three of these weapons damage both hull and shield so again you don't need to worry about swapping through specialist weapons during battle. Now if you want to say thanks then subscribe down below, let me know in the comments how easily you built this, what you like about it, what you don't. And if you want to see some other original builds check out some of my other videos and keep an eye out for the next one.